Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another Mortgage Coach Tuesday morning coaching call. Every Tuesday morning, 9 o'clock Pacific, we are here to deliver the mortgage industry's absolute best sales meeting for Mortgage Coach members. My name is Dave Savage. I'm the CEO of Mortgage Coach. Anybody that is new to this call, I urge you to connect with me on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and absolutely make sure that you like the Mortgage Coach Facebook page. We're always sharing what's new, what's fresh, and I've even pulled in a few um, questions from our Facebook page for today's call. So make sure you connect with us. We've got as our special guest today, Coach Mike White. Uh, Mike White has been a tremendous mentor and coach to myself in terms of making selling a game. Him and I have connected at the uh, Fairway Sales Rally for a couple of years in a row right now. And there's a number of, you know, we have a number of mutual clients that are using Mortgage Coach to deliver value. Well, last time we brought him in was in September 24th and really talked about how to make selling a game. I mean, that's, that's what that whole call was about. And if you missed that call, it is in our YouTube page, and I urge you to go check that out. Well, I, I specifically planned this call with Mike following up Steve Harney's call last week because between Mortgage Coach and Steve Harney, we've got some great insights to share, and I thought, Mike's philosophy around making selling a game, Mike's philosophy around the basics, how to keep score, how to deliver insight. I thought it would just he'd be a fantastic guest to make last week's call even more actionable, to remind you of some of those key concepts, and at the end of the day, help you get more business with realtors. So Mike, welcome to the call. Well, Dave, thanks. It's, it's great to be here. I always enjoy being on the Mortgage Coach call. and. Uh, certainly uh, enjoy all the calls that you do as, as many times as I possibly can to get on them because it's, it's even great for me to, to see what other people are thinking and hear what they're saying and be able to help respond. And when I knew that uh, my good friend Steve Harney was going to be on the call last week and, and you shared that with me, Steve and I actually worked in the, in the same marketplace back when he was a realtor and I was a loan originator and uh, later in our careers we actually had my mortgage company and Steve's real estate company were we're connected quite closely, so uh, it, it was great to hear Steve and his call. And, and once again, I, I thank you for the opportunity to, to share with your with your people. Well, it's going to be a great teaching. Everybody, stay tuned. Don't multitask. It's going to be an hour of insight. So, so let's get with a few um, house cleaning things and a few updates first. Uh, you probably got an email a couple days ago where we're doing ten days of training. And again, these are quick hits. Last, yesterday's call was 18 minutes. The goal is that we're teaching you a specific concept and strategy that's relevant to today's market in 20 minutes or less. So if you've not signed up for this, you can go to the Mortgage Coach Facebook page and sign up for this. And if you were on yesterday's call, we'd love to know what you thought was the big takeaway or what did you learn? We had over, I think, 300 people on the call. We've had over 400 people sign up for it and 10 days of training. It's going live for the next 10 days. Yesterday was the first day. But every single day, 20 minutes of value. Uh, we got, I want to do a big shout out and thank you to Rob Chrisman. This is a newsletter that I, I read daily. I don't know how many of you guys do. Um, but he, he gave us a shout out. I, I, I bring this to everybody's attention because everybody on this call is a mortgage coach member. Some of you are managers. All of you know managers and executives at your company. And, and while at the heart of Mortgage Coach, we deliver this wow sales tool, but we also deliver something that makes you more compliant as an individual loan officer. So I urge every single loan officer on this call, you should watch this five-minute teaching video. I was with myself and Ken Perry, a compliance expert. I think it will make you a more responsible and a more compliant mortgage originator. Watch it, pay attention, improve what you do, and forward this to your manager and leader. Uh, our goal is to bring Mortgage Coach and make it a cultural thing. It's not just one loan officer does this and one loan officer does that. We want to make you more compliant. We want to help you sell more. We want to help you be more valuable. Do not miss this video. There will be a link on our Facebook page if you did not get the newsletter and already see it. But an important update, and thank you, Rob Christman, for helping us evangelize what we think is an important today's market. Much appreciated. Uh, so to kick off the call, I, I had a, a question come in from a member, Joel. And Joel, if you're on this call, I hope you are. I want to thank you for reaching out, asking a great question. 
I've uh, always tried to showcase these questions and whatever you guys ask, I, I try to bring it into the call, whether I do it kind of passively or more actively like this one. But, you know, I get this call where how do I, how do I, um, the, the question has come a couple different ways. After meeting with a realtor, what kind of edge strategy and video should I forward to them? And in this particular case, you know, I'd love some ideas on emails to send to showcase edge open house flyers to realtors. So uh, Scott Cummings uh, is on today's call. And Scott, I can't remember if he reached out to me, I reached out to him, but at the end of the day, he's doing something that I think will speak to this question. So Scott, if you are on the call and you could jump in and share you know, your answer to this question and share with everybody what you're doing to deliver value to realtors with Mortgage Coach Edge. Scott, if you could unmute your phone if you have it on mute. All right, everybody. Well, hopefully we'll get Scott back in the call. Scott, if you can hear me, um, just jump in and let me know when you get back into the call. Scott Cummings. All right, we'll bring Scott in when we do that. So, so um, Mike, we're going to do a bit of a debrief on Steve Harney. So as you know, I did that Steve Harney call and you, you were on it, you heard it. Uh, I want to remind everybody, you know, if, if there's a takeaway you get from today's call, go to Twitter, tag it as Mortgage Coach, and anything that is meant for, for Mike, put in Mortgage Mentor. That is Mike White's uh, Twitter handle. So make sure any shout outs you, you put in that way. We had a couple great ones from last week from the Steve Harney call. And with that said, uh, Mike, I'm going to go through what I think were some of the, the big takeaways, and then feel free to add some of your takeaways from Steve's call last week. So I, I personally love this quote that came up. You know, people don't believe what you tell them. They believe what they tell themselves. And I know you've got a lot of wisdom on, you know, how do we get realtors and home buyers to believe what we're sharing with them? You know, any perspectives or thoughts on how we can do a better job on this? Well, Dave, you know, it, it really comes back down to is, you know, perception and reality and knowing what to do. And so much of the mortgage and real estate business is, is emotional or perception. And, and one of the things that I've seen over the last oh, four to six weeks is an increasing amount of what I perceive to be is panic in the industry about how they make the, the big pivot from, you know, doing a largely refinance business to getting in front of purchase business and I can tell by the traffic on my website and the inquiries that I get and the products that actually get sold off my site that there's never been a bigger piece of the puzzle right now than people trying to figure out how to get in front of realtors and you know to me it, it, that is one of the things that I have done since the earliest days in the early 80s when I first got into the business and it is a tried and true method of of differentiation and creation of value. And so with what appears to be this panic and the, and the grasp of what we're doing, you can go on the internet and you can find thousands of different things out there that they'll try to sell you, you know, to get in front of, you know, realtor business. And I think having a, a person like Steve Harney on last week, it, it just really sets the scene coming from somebody in the real estate side of the, of the business. Because he, can, he brings so much to the table, and I think one of the things that I, I really wanted to point out, and you and I had discussed, you know, it was Steve made some really excellent points, and, and I want to go through those in a, in a few minutes, but the first thing that I really want to point out to everybody is not what Steve said. It's the important takeaways, or at least from my perspective, the, the important takeaways is what he didn't say. You know, he, he didn't get on that call and say it's time to go out and, and buy, you know, a gross of branded coffee cups. He didn't go out and tell you to, to print up a thousand pens or calendars. He, he didn't tell you to start running around and go out and buy some donuts and bagels and bring them to the office to get in, you know, and, and leave them there for the people. He, he didn't tell you to go out there and drop off rate sheets to the, to the agents. You know, he, he didn't tell you to go online and, and buy a bunch of leads or, or pay for a bunch of websites. 
And, and what he didn't tell you is, is he certainly didn't tell you to go out there and pay desk rental fees or go out and spend a whole bunch of money on, on realtor marketing. He didn't say any of those things. And yet, I guarantee you, this very point in time, loan originators and their companies are looking at the marketplace and some, if not all, of their strategies to get in front of realtors contain some or all of these items. And that's the, that's the part that I want people to be aware of because the rest of what we're going to discuss today is not going to make any sense if we don't step up and differentiate. Because the, the key components, as far as I'm concerned, of, of what Steve spoke about, and what I have found in my practice, and again, I work with hundreds of loan officers across the country, they all do a, a different type or balance of business, but all of them have a realtor component in it because it's important to make sure that you have it. But Steve's takeaways, and if you can think about what he said, and for anybody who's on this call, who wasn't on Steve's call, just go back in and listen to his call because it, it's pretty powerful. And a lot of what I'll bring to the table for you today and what we'll discuss will make a lot, lot more sense. But what Steve spoke about was partnering in the process, was defining for each other what the, what the process was on how both of you were going to get in front of and secure more opportunities. You know, and a classic piece of that is understanding some, some key information. He had a report, and, and he does on KCM, and, and that's his, his company, Keeping Current Matters, which is one of the authority pieces of material that is, is out there, is, you know, is, is talking about the things that his company brings to the table and information. And one of the key parts that he brought up was, like you just had up on, on, your, on your graphic about skipping the, the bagel. And we're talking about information. This, the information is, is the lifeblood. It's not about bombarding people with content. It's about showing and sharing things that provide real solutions and turn into real money. And so things like this, knowing this chart backwards and forwards, and again, you can look at your own market and plug in the dollar values for your average loan sizes or transactions to make it fit in because there's always going to be a naysayer that says, well, we don't have that type of a loan or that wasn't work here. Look and make it market specific. Use this as a, as a guide. One of the so, other things that he... So a, a, a real, real quick, Mike, before we get too far into it, I do know we got Scott back on the call Okay. And I, I think the timing is perfect to bring him in because it, it, it really ties well with what you said at this point. So, Scott, real quick, if you're on the call within the context of what Mike just teed up, why don't you share what you're doing uh, to answer that question and speak to what uh, Mike just went through. Perfect. Uh, I think it was awesome. You know, and, and Mike touched on a very valid point. And, and that's the idea of the, the, the no bagel, the no donut, the no pin concept. Uh, we do none of that. I don't pay one nickel for anything. Uh, uh, we do high-level, high-trust interviews with realtors. Uh, I buy my lunch. They buy their own lunch. I have 30 uh, realtors coming to my uh, business breakthrough breakfast this Thursday morning at 8.30 a.m., and they all buy their breakfast. We don't buy them breakfast. We don't buy anything. But what we do do is we create a distinction, and the distinction we create and we use Mortgage Coach to do it, it's all about educating and empowering. It's about providing data and information that not only helps them transform their business, but empowers clients to make informed decisions. And if we go deep on relationships, we're going to create that. So what do we do? Um, you know, probably to head into the call that, uh, to tee the call up, you know, my, here's what my yesterday looked like. Uh, I had 20 uh, conversations with realtors. I booked about six uh, brand new appointments. Uh, a couple new purchase loans, uh, three new uh, purchase lead referrals, and uh, today we'll do the same thing. I speak to um, probably 15-ish, maybe 18 uh, conversations a day with people, and from that, we're booking tons of face-to-face -face appointments, and we're out there, but we're out there creating relationships, and we come out there, we're not here with the standard loan officer speech, I'm the lowest, I'm the fastest, I'm the quickest. We're out there to say, what are your greatest challenges? What would give you the biggest breakthroughs? Uh, the piece that I sent Dave that started this conversation, we'll drill down on here, is 
you know, we as lenders and loan officers many times want to go out and talk buyer, 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 because that's where we're thinking we're going to get a loan. Well, one of the things I think that we can do, and that it's a, it's a shift in the conversation, and the distinction or the shift in the conversation is what if we went to them and said, Mr. and Mrs. Realtor, you've got a lot of listings. That takes a lot of energy, a lot of time, a lot of resources to market and promote those. What if we could help you sell those faster? What if we could bring more qualified buyers to your listings? And so what we start to do and what I start to educate people on, and it's typically a follow-up, and I think this gets back to Joel's question on Facebook, is how do we follow up after the high trust interview? What I've been doing on listings is I'll have them send me a couple listings. If they're saying, Scott, I haven't been able to get this sold, what do you think? And I have a conversation with them, and we're using math, and we're using Mortgage Coach to illustrate the math and the facts. I'm able to say, well, instead of a price reduction, let's talk about a buyer uh, uh, closing cost allowance from the seller. And so we use mortgage totes to create analysis and say, here's a standard price reduction. How does that impact a, a buyer? If we think about some buyer you know, buying a $200,000 house, putting 5% down, uh, I'm financing 95% of the house. They're making a 5% down payment. Well, 5% of $200,000 isn't much. If we took and said, well, Mr. Seller, what if you wrote into the comments, seller paid closing cost allowance up to an amount or a percentage within the lending guidelines, now all of a sudden my buyer is saving thousands of dollars. The Mortgage Coach Edge video that Dave's pulled up there, one of the things that we've been very, very successful with is having the seller paid closing cost allowance be utilized to go towards upfront mortgage insurance premium. And where does that help? Many buyers, because of the housing crisis, lost 20% of their down payment, so they can't move into the, the next house with the down payment where they now have to have mortgage insurance. We can eliminate that. We can go to the to the, the realtor who can then take our edge report and our email comments and sit down with a seller and watch the edge report and we can say, Mr. Seller, if we can provide a seller paid closing cost, eliminate monthly PMI, now all of a sudden we're probably bringing up people that are in a 30 or 40 or $50,000 lower sales price. We're now bringing them up to a more expensive home for the same monthly payment. And so if we start to show strategies like that, how are we helping? Perfect case studies. I met with a realtor a couple months ago, shared this with her. She had five listings. We put this on all five listings. She sold three of the five listings in two weeks. Not because of a hot market. These were her challenging properties, but because of how we helped her structure and position them. I have another client, frustrated, couldn't get their home sold. Uh, I discussed it with him. He said, man, he said, Scott, he said, call my realtor and educate her on this. I called the realtor, walked her through it, how it went, showed her how to put the comments on the Board of Realtors uh, comment section so it would stand out when people are searching listings. Boom, a couple weeks we sold the listing. And so what we're doing in is we're going in helping create solutions. We're, we're about doing value add. We're educating. We're empowering clients. But we're out there. The, the core of this is you've got to master this art of prospecting. You know, when you were talking about the sales as a game, you know, if, we, if we don't see it as a game, we can start to take it personally. But I'm all about massive action creates massive results. And it's very, very focused uh, on how getting out and helping these people. And it's been uh, hugely impactful. And so I hope this helped, Dave. Is there, Anything else I can add or answer at this time that might uh, be a resource or help you, everyone? Well, first of all, I, I hope everybody, hearing the amount of activity that Scott has going, hearing his attitude and energy, hearing his philosophy around I'm having a conversation and then I'm tailoring a very, I'm listening, I'm learning, and then I'm tailoring some insight that will help them achieve their goal. So in this particular case, one of the goals and one of the opportunities was They've got a lot of listings. They've got some that aren't selling better than others. Let's tailor a mortgage strategy that helps them. So, I, I, again, I thought it was, it, we could spend the rest of the call breaking down why you're successful and bringing that into the call. I would just ask Scott to stay on the call. Feel free to jump in if you think you can add some value around the conversation that Mike and I are going to have. And thanks for sharing your email and jumping on this call ad hoc and bringing some, you know, some success and some energy from the street. So stay on it if you're cool with that. I will. My pleasure. I'm going to mute my phone. You call me back in when you need me. Oh, hey, one last question. That email that you forwarded to me, um, in order to really answer that, that member's question, I'd like to take a snag of that and give him a picture of it. Do you yeah. have any issue? Okay, good. So I will, yeah. I will share that on Facebook so that your question is answered in a very tangible way. Keep those questions coming. So, so Mike, let me bring you back into it. Let me tee it up. So again, I'm going to repeat a few things because I just want to make sure you guys got it here. It's about delivering tailored insight to realtors. Getting them to go, wow, 
I hadn't thought of it that way before, or wow, that would help me sell my property. And you don't need to buy lunch to do that. And, and I hope a takeaway is it's not just about talking and telling and sharing, it's about showing. Because seeing is believing. And if we want this to become the realtor's idea, we need to share the right strategy at the right time, and we need to show it to them. That's the fastest way to success. So I did have a question. People were asking for Steve Harney's uh, insight that he shared in Mortgage Coach last week, which was why buy now to help create urgency with buyers. So all you need to do is put Harney into your mobile app. At this point, everybody on this call should have the Mortgage Coach app installed. If you don't, it's free. Mortgage Coach, whether it's your Android store, your iOS store, and type in Harney. And you can see that teaching and that strategy. So, Mike, sorry for the interruption. Let's bring it back into your conversation, and then we'll get into the structured conversation that you and I kind of went through already within the next few minutes. Go ahead, my friend. And, and Dave, you know, let's be honest. You know, Scott brings a very valid point in here. And one of the things I loved about what he said is, is, is I have always taught my loan officers when they're working with realtors to to find the path of least resistance, and it's generally working with the listing side of the transaction, not so much on the buy side. In fact, for many originators who are trying to get in front of new realtors, the fastest way to ingratiate yourself to them is by working with their listing side. One of the things that you know I saw Scott doing was asking questions and providing solutions, and I think that's wonderful. Imagine if you take it to the next generation of competency and say, we're going to prepare the mortgage coach uh, presentation for every new listing when it comes on the market so that you can use that tool in your marketing and your advertising, that, that just pushes it along a little further. And, and by the way, and, and I know he didn't bring it up, but I am sure Scott's conversation with that home seller about who they're using for their next mortgage is, is pretty straightforward and simple. Imagine if you have that conversation helping that client sell that house so that they can receive the most possible money and, and the best possible value for their sale and help. Why, why wouldn't they use the same technology and the same person that helped them sell to help them buy? I mean, you're sitting right in front of them. Chances are they're going to need a loan for their next house. How many sales a year do you think you could pick up by helping that realtor relationship and getting in front of that seller. So again, it's something that we'll cover further on, but I love that Scott made that point because so many times loan officers look at realtors and all they think about is how do I get in front of their buyers? And if you don't step back and understand where the opportunities lie, it's going to create huge challenges. And, I, and that's why I want to go back to what Steve Harney was saying you know, one of the powerful things that he brought up about, you know, he was talking about teaching, but he, he said some key things in here that I just want to get on the table. He said, forget about the 80-20 rule. The surveys that they're doing right now say that about 10% of the agents close or handle about 90% of the transactions. Keep that in mind when you're, you're figuring out who to target because all realtors are not created equal. And so one of the points in here with the heart of the teacher, like Dave Ramsey says, is, you know, this is not about selling. This is about building trust and integrity in what it is that you do because you have to transform the relationship. This is not about selling mortgages anymore, people. This is about becoming an expert. This is about becoming the authority in your marketplace about all things mortgage. And the one thing I just want to caution you on is the fact, and I throw this out there, and I, and I want you to pay attention, is be very, very careful when you're sharing information. Because Steve made it very clear. Nobody wants to be preached to. Nobody wants a mortgage person to come in and tell a realtor how they're supposed to do their job. You're not there to tell them what to do. You're there to share with them how to get in front of different opportunities. So what I usually do to coach my clients when they get a sharing moment is to start out by using a phrase like, I saw on the National Association of Realtors website, 
I looked up some information on NeighborCity.com. I was on a broadcast where I saw some information from industry expert Steve Harney, who shared from his KCM website this statistic. Always couch it back to a source from something that is recognized as the authority on the subject. If you from your mortgage company walks in and say, I'm going to show you how to do your job better than you know how to do it yourself, you're going to turn off a lot more opportunities than you're ever going to gain. So understand about successful sharing. And it is just like any marketing company has ever done before when it comes to advertising. And one of the things that, that Steve Horney has repeatedly brought up, it, it takes a little bit of skill to become a teacher. And one of the things that you have to remember when you try to teach are three very simple steps is when you're going to share something with somebody, you have to tell them what you're, what you're going to tell them. In other words, you explain to them the entry into this, the, the headlines, so to speak, of your topic is, I saw on the National Association of Realtors website, you start off by saying, this is where this information comes from. Then you share with them, or you tell them the compelling content, the story, which is, I was on a coaching call, and I heard someone speaking, and they said that you know realtors were having some issues with some houses that weren't selling. And they shared a strategy about how using this particular product or program and using the ability on how to make a concession toward closing costs helped move three out of five troubled properties in a period of two weeks. What you're doing is what are you doing? You're giving them the story. And then the last part of this is always telling them what you told them. In other words, recap the situation and give them a call to action. In other words, giving them what the solution is. And the solution, again, according to what Scott's story brought us to the table was the realtor had some trouble with their listings. We put together the Mortgage Coach Edge presentations. We changed the way in which we marketed the property together. And that, along with the realtor's marketing efforts, generated 60% of the properties being sold within two weeks. Boom. It's like, Boom. really? Would yeah. you like, now, now the question is, would you like to try that on a couple of your listings? Tell <laughs> me about one of I, the listings you'd like to sell today. Do you, do you have a property you'd like to sell within the next two weeks? Hey, Mike. So, so first of all, real powerful. I, I would like to hear you know that that concept of don't tell but share. You know, we have Scott who's in the trenches right now. I would love to hear your perspective on that, Scott. Maybe for everybody on the call, if you could, how do you do that? How do you have that conversation and share versus tell, but still be a leader? Yeah, great point, Dave. But, you know, I think a couple things and awesome content. You know, I, I do wholeheartedly agree. We don't want to go to people and say, you ought to be doing this, because that immediately turns people off. And so what I do in my practice when I'm meeting with people, I am very, very good, whether it's the client, the realtor, whoever, I always want to have segues and I want to have stories of how we've helped. Because if we think about in life, the most powerful thing that we have in life and sales and business or anything is the power of the testimony. How many infomercials have we seen or we talk to someone and they share, oh my gosh, let me tell you how this impacted or changed my life, and we all want that. And so the testimonial or how we're helping is going to be wildly impactful. In addition to that, many times if I'm in a high trust interview, which uh, I my, in January I'll have 120 face-to-face -face high trust interviews with realtors. When I'm in those meetings, one of the things that I'm going to do is if something comes up, I may say, this is how I'm using it in my business, because we're really all in the real estate business. We're really all in the client business. So I will say, here's how I'm applying something in my life. The other thing I may do is I may reach out to them and say, you know, hey, Dave, do you mind, you know, could I have your permission to share uh, something, a thought about your business? And what you'll find if you're sincere, you're authentic, and you're genuine, people are going to be open to that coaching. The other thing that we do, and I would encourage everyone on these calls to do, is we have these monthly 
uh, business breakthrough breakfast where I'm bringing people in and we're sharing these concepts at a very high level and getting people together in a group you can share uh, in a way that starts to create that synergy among people. So hopefully that helps. Well, first of all, that absolutely helps. So I want to, you know, kind of tie a bow around this debrief of the Steve Harney conversation. I do want to have everybody make sure you know we are doing a webinar on the 19th with Steve. So you can sign up from that from our website, as well, or excuse me, from our Facebook page, as well as there will be an email coming out announcing that. So I think we've done a nice job of doing a debrief on that. I do want to transition. I think I've already introduced Mike, and you know this is his third time now as a leader in our call, uh, once last year, once a few months ago. And so other than just, if you do have a big takeaway, we'd love to have you share that on Twitter. But let's get into the, the basics. You know, today's call is all about using the basics, and Mike and I are going to really make sure afterwards you know what we think the basics are. The only thing I would say, you know, add to that is as a mortgage coach loan officer, Everybody on this call, you have these weekly calls, you have Edge, you have Rate Watch, you have superpowers and tools that everybody else does not have. So you, with all your superpowers and tools, how can you be successful? So one quick question I have and a survey I have is, what are your goals and how are you doing at achieving them? I just want to know where everybody's head's at right now. I'm going to launch this poll. Yeah, I like that. 100%, 70%, 50%, less than 50% freaking out. That's, uh, I'd be interested to see yeah, how, 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 yeah. how, how many of the freaking out numbers actually. Now, here's the other part, though. This is a, for, for this particular group, if they're already mortgage coach clients, I, I would think it wouldn't be, that these numbers would probably be significantly better than what the numbers would be in the, in the industry in general. And I hope your, your, your clients remember that, is just being exposed to, Situations like this and, and, and dealing with questions like this puts you so far ahead of the of the poor souls that that don't have a tool like this or access to this information that it, it is it is startling. So uh, this is probably yeah, be, reflective of your group, but not generally the industry in in question. Well, I'm going to push the, the survey in just one second. We've only got 60% of you that have voted. So guys, I want to get to 70%. Where are you at? By the way, Scott, if you don't mind, where, where would you answer this right now? Where are you at? I'd put me at about 70%, uh, Dave, somewhere in there. We're not, we're not at 100% of goals because uh, I raised my goal for 2014 by another uh, 100 fundings per year over 2013. So we're always wanting this idea of can we double our business each and every year or grow at 20 to 40%. So I'm not going to be there. All right. Well, here's the answers, folks. Tell me if you're surprised. 4% are at 100 percent, so kudos to you 100 percenters. Uh, 18 at 70, 33 at 50, and 16% uh, freaking out. Uh, to me, the big takeaway, though, is just about 70% are under 50%. And so, again, you know, we, we've, that creates stress. We've got to fix this, and we've got to nail this. And that's what today's call is all about. So hey, when Dave, you can I can I add one other real quick comment? Absolutely. Quick quick thought on when we saw this, the uh, freaking out in the lower numbers. One of the things that I would really challenge everyone on the call is, and it's this idea of market corrections expose weakness in our business plans. And so one of the things we want to think about is for 2014 is how do we create this solid plan built on solid goals that we don't have these freak out moments or we see our business disappear. And so that's one of the things I think we want to weigh. How do we diversify into business pillars? How do we take action? And how do we build a business plan that doesn't create these big swings in our business? Thanks. No, again, great point. And you don't need to be freaking out. We just need to be really smart and we need to get to the basics. And that's why we've got a great, you've added a lot of value, Scott. Keep bringing it. And, you know, Mike, it's, it's go time. You know, let's first of all do just a quick review of the point system and how you make it a game and then let's spend the most of our talk time for the next 30 minutes or so breaking down what are the basics. So, so walk us through your point system and your game. Pretty straightforward, Dave. It's like anything else. We, we try to keep things simple and, and put it into a philosophy that we understand. The last 
call that we did on scoring, we went into it a great deal, and I encourage anybody who wasn't on that call to go back and, and listen to it. But we basically take the things that we're supposed to be doing every day as originators, and we, we try to keep score of, of what it is that we do. Baseball is pretty simple. There's the ballpark, and the diamond is first, second, and third base and home. We understand that we run the bases counterclockwise, and for every time that we get successfully around there and score a run, it gets tabulated. The scoreboard keeps tracks of runs, hits, and errors. Statistics are kept on pitchers thrown, strikeouts, and walks. There are a lot of different ways to get on base. There's a lot of different things that you can do. And so what I try to do with my coaching clients is look at the mortgage business and put it into a game format, just like baseball, so we can go out there and play every day and figure out how to win. What do we do every day? Because you can't necessarily close a loan every day. And so if the only measurable that you use is closing a loan, you're going to be disappointed more times than not. So what I devised was a system called 30 points to win the day, and it only tracked activities that you do to start the opportunity process. And the first thing that we talk about, again, you get one point for talking to a borrower or a partner conversation. If you pick up the phone and speak to a client, you pick up the phone and you speak to somebody in your database, you pick up the phone and you speak to one of your referral partners. That's not left a message. It's not sent them an email. It's I spoke to them live. I picked up the phone, I called them, and I spoke to them. Every time you make that happen, you get one point. If nothing else can happen in your day, if you have 30 successful conversations, speaking to borrowers and referral partner conversations, even if you sat home or at your desk and made 30 phone calls, spoke to 30 people. Now, we all know that won't happen. You'll probably have to make 50 or 60 or 70 or 80 phone calls to speak to 30 people. But conceivably, within your control, you could control having a successful day because you could make 30 phone calls or at least speak to 30 people. So that's the first part. You get one point for speaking to the uh, a client or a referral partner. You get three points for a move. Well, what's a move? Well, just like the baseball diamond is laid out, okay, suspect is first base. A suspect is somebody that you have contact information on. When you generate a suspect or you speak to a suspect, okay, you, you generate a new suspect and create a new suspect, you have a move. You created a new suspect. You get three points from that. If the customer decides, if that suspect decides to give you enough information so that you can pull credit and offer price, product, and program, now you've moved to second base on that client. I've moved them now to where I've, I've been able to pull credit and I've been able to review their information so that I can order, I can offer price, product, and program. In other words, an edge report. Okay, you can put together what the scenarios would be based upon the information that they gave you. The next move would be going from second to third base or moving from the prospect stage to the application stage. In other words, they've completed the application. They've given you all the documentation you need to successfully put a loan application into your processing system. Again, every time that happens, you get three points for that. And last but not least is actually closing a loan. You close a loan, you get three points. Again, any combination. If you have 10 of these things happen during the course of the day, you have 10 moves, you have now turned around and you have gotten your 30 points. If you had 10 conversations and had seven of these people move during the process, then you would have had 10 points for the 10 phone conversations, 21 points for having seven moves, you get 31 points, you win the day. Last in this conversation or this thing are the realtor meetings. Now, this can be realtor meetings. We use realtor meeting here. But it's any referral partner, accountant, financial planner, divorce attorney, whoever you use. But this is not just speaking to them on the phone, and it's not just walking into their office or saying hi. It's not just going to a B&I meeting and saying there were 30 members of my B&I group there, and I talked to five of them, so I get 50 points. That doesn't count. When, you, when I talk about 10 points for a meeting, it's, it's a constructive meeting 
about how the two of you are going to generate opportunities. Am I speaking to that realtor about doing edge reports for all of their listings? Am I speaking to that realtor about working with them on, their, on how many buyers that they met over the weekend that I need to get in front of? Those are the type of meetings. If I have a meeting with an accountant, how am I getting my information in front of, their, of, the, in front of his clients so that when they put their documents together for their tax returns next year, they know to come to me to do an annual mortgage review. Those are the types of things that I'm talking to. So conversations plus moves plus realtor meetings equal your total score. One point for an actual conversation, three points for moving somebody through the process, ten points for having a opportunity-driven meeting, and the total point here is to generate 30 or more points in a day. And that's it. If you know what it takes to win the day, what I will tell you is I have not had a single client ever consistently generate 30 points a day and not close a minimum of five to seven loans a month. Well, and just in case to refresh everybody's memory, if you're closing five to seven purchase transactions a month, it puts you in the top 30% of our industry. So just understand that part. Something as simple as keeping score and something as simple as knowing what to measure will drive you to the result, which is closing more loans. So, so I, I think that was so valuable for so many loan officers on this call. If you are closing less than five loans a month, here is a path to make every day fun because you'll know whether you won the day or not. It's clear, it's concise, and it's powerful. And if you're one of those loan officers that you're closing five, seven, eight, well, you just need to increase your score. What is your score? So again, you guys can go out and get creative, come up with your own game. This is a proven game from a proven coach that has taken hundreds of loan officers from closing less than five loans to closing five loans. So I urge you, be careful about getting too creative. Uh, this makes a lot of sense to me, and hopefully it makes a lot of sense to a lot of you on this call, and hopefully on the on this call we'll get more conversations, more moves, and more realtor meetings. So let's, let's transition to the basics. By the way, um, Scott, if you're still on the call, any, any quick commentary you have around that? Does that make sense to you? It makes total sense to me I, because I love what Mike is saying, and, and you cannot be successful. You cannot play the game without measuring and tracking results. We are freaks of tracking results. We track every phone call, every lead, every meeting. And like I said, you know, we have very high uh, standards that, that I live by, and, and, and we use a similar system. Kind of, I don't use the point thing he uses, but if you don't track it, you're not going to achieve. And so awesome job, Mike. I think that was some huge content. I appreciate it. Thanks, God. Yeah. And for 70% and for of the people on the call who are not closing over five loans, don't get creative. This is what you need to do. The only time you need to get creative is when you have, you've got a sustainable mortgage practice that's closing five or loans, more month, loans a month. Now let's get creative and test some ways, test some metrics, test some strategies to scale your business to 10 loans, to 20 loans. Because it's a whole lot easier to go from five to ten than it is to get to that five consistently. So I just I urge everybody on the call who's not getting to five, don't get too creative here, guys. Just follow a proven formula for success. Uh, and Mike, you, Dave, I still have people who do twenty, thirty loans a month who who still follow the the fundamental tenets of, of what it is that we're talking about. They they just do it because they it, it's not just them anymore. You know, now it's their it's their assistant or it's their you know their production partner or a junior LO. They they use the same tool. It just just imagine when you get this nailed down and, and you use it to get to this level for yourself. Imagine what you can do. You know, bringing in other people who may need your help to do the same thing. And so, just just because you know, I just want to get you to five because I know if I get you to five. You'll eat every day, number one. But I also know that the, the method behind the, uh, the madness is that for of the people who break out of doing less than five loans a month to getting to five loans a month, 33% uh, of those people who get to five go on to do 10 plus. So 
I, I'm not worried about creating the 10 plus person. I know if I create enough five loan a month people, the 10 plus people will show themselves and and be and and do it, uh, you know, that way. So it's again, we get back to the math. So so I want to make sure we get these basics in. We got about 15 minutes left in the call. Okay. So I'm going to do this in the in the structure of a survey, because when you look at the basics. First and foremost, it's the borrower conversation, or in today's market, the home buyer conversation. So I want to know, while Mike and I are sharing our thoughts around this, I want to know where, where do you stack up right now? Are you having a great borrower conversation where you're asking great questions, you're tailoring your advice and your teaching to what the borrower wants, you're delivering an edge video that's CC to the, to the client, excuse me, CC to the realtor, to the borrower, where are you at and where do you think you're at with this conversation? On a scale of one to five, great, good, average, needs improvement, or just plain old bad, where are you at right now? And uh, again, you know, Mike, keep in mind, we've got about 15 minutes, we've got a little more content. Yep. Anything you want to share around this, this question as people are answering it and telling us where they're at? Well, to be honest with you, Dave, the, the best part of the conversation is being the person asking the questions and letting people share with you what they're trying to accomplish. People, people will tell you what they want. The easiest, the easiest position to be in is have somebody come up to you and tell you what it is they want and you be able to give it to them. And, and it doesn't have to be any harder than that. When we talk about, and I, people will, will answer this, and I know a, a lot of loan officers have great trepidation on having some of these conversations, but the reality of it is as, as we all know, it, it's about asking the right questions and listening to what the customer says. The customer will tell you what they want you to, to, to do for them. So, so the, the answers are in, you know, 12% said great. Everybody else was good or below. Uh, you know, over 30% was average or less. And I, I mean, my message is that's just plain old got to get fixed. Fix that in two weeks. You all have Mortgage Coach Edge. So it's really, to Mike's point, it's as simple as asking a few questions, and we've told you what those questions are many a times. By the way, we've shared those questions many a times, and, and there's just so many interviews around what they should be. Get clear on your questions, and, and, and make sure every home buyer gets an edge video, and make sure that the realtor is CC'd. If you're doing that, you've got a great home buyer conversation, and you've got that fundamental handled. So, um, the next one is, how is your realtor meeting? So let us know from a basic standpoint, where do you rate right now your, um, your realtor meeting? I'm going to put that survey up while, while Mike is sharing some thoughts around that. Answer this question, how is your realtor meeting? You know, good, great, average, bad, where are you at? And, and Mike, if you wouldn't mind, you know, while everybody's answering this survey, share what you think are one or two of the the, the critical cornerstones to a great realtor meeting? Well, first of all, I was making sure, you know, and again, when we talk about the realtor stuff and, and you know, the game process, if you're going to make trying to get in front of really good realtors and generating great business, then you get to make it a game. And I think the first thing when it comes to the realtor meeting is, you know, you should know a little bit about them. And so like any sports team would do, why don't you scout who the players are? Scout the, the, the team that you're going to go play. And, and, and know who they are. You can use, there are many tools out there. The one I, I like to do, and almost anybody can use, and it's free, by the way, is a tool called NeighborCity.com. If you just go to NeighborCity.com and punch in the information, it'll give you all kinds of information about every realtor in your marketplace. It'll tell you how they rank. It'll tell you the number of transactions that they've done. That they have a, a metrics by how they, they do those. It'll help you look at who the realtors are that you want to get in front of. Or if there's a particular realtor that you decide, go to realtor.com and look look at, for some of their listings or go look at their own company website and see what listings that they have put up and go look for those listings. And it'll share with you the other listings that that agent has. You know, search them on Google and see what it says. Do your scouting report. Do your homework. Because when you know Rachel Realtor has got a beautiful listing over at 123 Main Street, 
what what better way to lead the conversation when you want to speak with her is that, oh, man, I saw that great listing you got at 123 Main Street. I bet you've got a lot of activity on that one. Immediately it shows you took the time and you made an investment in knowing the conversation and the person that you were going to talk to. So what I think is interesting, when I asked you this question, you know, you could have got into, well, here's the five questions to ask. Make sure you ask great questions. Make sure you listen. Make sure you do an edge video. First thing you talked about was make sure you're talking to the right person. Because uh, if you're talking to the wrong person, doesn't matter how great the meeting is, doesn't matter all that, you're not going to get a lot of business. So I hope for everybody on that call, I mean, that was a big, huge, massive takeaway. Make sure you're talking to the right people and make sure you know who you're talking to. Uh, do your research. He gave you some great insights, some shared some great insights and value. And I, again, looking at the results, 70% of everybody on the call is average or less. I mean, fix that. I mean, we've been in the business for a long time. I did a, a great interview with Jeremy Forcier on the coaching call a few weeks ago. He posted it on Facebook. What are the five questions he asked every single realtor? And, and again, in a minute, I'm going to share some ideas and strategies. But I would just say there's, there's just no excuse not to have a good realtor conversation. Going from good to great, you know, that takes time. It takes practice. It takes real dedication. But, but I really want to see everybody at 70% here. And I think the content we share between last week's call, between this week's call, I mean, there's a path to doing it. I think it's just getting focused. Make sure you're talking to the right people and make sure you've got the basics down. You know how to have a great mortgage coach conversation. You know how to deliver insight, not push and sell ideas, but deliver insights that are tailored around the conversation that you're having. So uh, kind of the last core piece of the basics surveys uh, before we get into some final thoughts are how good are you at scheduling realtor meetings? Because at the end of the day, you can't deliver a great realtor meeting if you can't schedule a great realtor meeting. So everybody, really quick, give us a push on this. How are you at scheduling these meetings and having a full calendar of realtor meetings? And again, I'm going to ask the same question again, um, Mike. What are, just one, when, you, when I ask you that question, what is essential to and a cornerstone of successful loan officers that are great at doing this? Well, you know, and the first thing is it might not be what you think. Sometimes scheduling a great realtor meeting is you scheduling the opportunity to get in front of that person, not necessarily agreeing with them as to what time you're going to connect. The preliminary part is there is, you know, I want people to deliver value first. I want to make it almost impossible for them to reject having a meeting with me, on, on, you know, if it's somebody that I want to get in front of. And so the first thing that I do when it comes to, you know, when it comes to scheduling these meetings is, is create the fact that you're already visible. People are much more likely to schedule a meeting with you if they already know and if they've seen you or you've been visible in one way or another. So make sure that you're approaching these people in a, in a visible way. Give them information. Drop information off of their office. You know, find a listing that they're doing and send them uh, an edge report on one of their listings and say, I'd love to discuss with you, you know, this, this property and, and how we could do this on, you know, on your other listing. That'll get a response to scheduling a meeting much more quickly than, you know, trying to, to do anything else if you've already delivered them some value. So, so Scott, I'm going to give you a chance towards the end of the call to just kind of tie this up. And so if you could be making some just crisp notes, so you can give them a one-minute boom, boom, from the conversation we've had, what your thoughts are. So if you could be ready for that in a few minutes. Uh, so there's the results. Um, again, an interesting takeaway for me is that this is the weakest um, survey of all. I mean, literally over 80% of you are saying you're average or worse. So interesting. Uh, again, I'm not, I don't want to say I'm shocked. First of all, I, pr I appreciate the participation and the transparency. And from a coaching standpoint, I'm going to come to some future calls with a little more focus around helping you get those meetings, scheduling the meetings, because 
this is no doubt where it looks like the biggest pain is within our community of loan officers. So um, I'm not going to try to boil the ocean in this call with, you know, what do we got, five minutes left in the call. But uh, good to know, and thanks for that transparency. So, so real quick, as mortgage coach members, some best practices that you all have is that every time you deliver a borrower link to an edge video, CC the realtor. Really simple, you know, just like Tim did here. Put the realtor in the loop. If it's a new realtor relationship, nudge them that, hey, I created this scenario. This is exactly what I told your client. Uh, in this particular case, Tim got great feedback from the realtor, and he actually got a meeting with the realtor. And within two weeks, he actually got a leads from the realtor. So that's a tactic and strategy to get meetings with new realtors. Make sure that you're following this play each and every time. This is how you go from good to great. This is a hallmark of good to great. And, and we've got more content on this on our Facebook page and in last coaching calls. Make sure that you never have another realtor conversation where Edge Mobile is not involved. You should be taking out your app. You should be showing them a specific strategy that's relevant to them. Uh, Scott, I know you're doing this. Maybe you can speak to this when I bring you back into the call in a minute. But you're just missing a huge opportunity if you can't bring client relevant, market relevant mortgage strategies into the conversation and doing it with a mobile device. Missed opportunity. A difference between good and great. And everybody on this call, you've got the power. And make sure every time that you have that meeting with a realtor, you're following up with an email edge video that's custom to them. So if they're really hot on first time home buyers, boom, follow up with, here's an example of a first time home buyer from last week. I could do this for all of your first time home buyers, a very tailored, very custom edge video mortgage strategy around what's hot to them. If they told you they're in a move up market and they're having a challenge creating urgency with all their move up buyers, boom, from Scott's point, if they're a big listing agent, and they have a couple listings that need help, boom, follow up with a very custom, relevant mortgage strategy with video on mobile that's valuable to them. Those are some basics. And again, I can't think enough, uh, you know, Steve Harney creating a very specific teaching that you guys can use. And I can't emphasize enough that you don't just tell, you don't just talk, you've got to show. A picture's worth a thousand words and we're helping you with that. So one homework assignment for everybody on this call is to share an Edge video link on our Facebook page today. Create an Edge video. I want to make sure you have that competency and make sure you share it. And if you don't know how to do that, come to our Tuesday coaching call. So, so um, you know, Mike, when we were doing our debrief to rock it out on this call, which I, I feel like we've done and I feel like there's been a lot of value, uh, this was something that you, you, you said, it really resonated with me. Why don't we, as we're kind of tying a bow around this call, share your perspective around stop selling and start sharing. Well, you know, they, again, it, it is this thing that you know, we put ourselves in, in a position, and, and I don't know why we do it as an industry to accept the standard and, or how people view us. So what I tried to do with my clients and what I tried to do you know, myself is to stop selling people and, and just share information. Salespeople go out there and they sell products and they sell commodities. And you can go anywhere and now it all becomes when you're selling, people gravitate toward price. And then if you don't have the lowest rate or you're not prepared to lie better than the other guy, then you're not going to see that deal. So I put a stop to that and I teach people to become experts and authorities and learn how to establish opportunities and to become a solutions provider so that they can go forward. And I, you know, I know with no doubt in my mind that if more loan originators took the time to become experts and authorities on what they were doing, we'd have a lot less conversation about where is my business going to come from. Because by the way, when you become an expert and authority and you stop selling and you start sharing you don't go out and find business as much as business comes and finds you. Powerful stuff. I want to urge everybody to reach out and connect with Mike. He's a great friend of Mortgage Coach. It's as simple as sending him an email and you know put in, uh, I'm with Mortgage Coach, and he'll share some love. He's, again, a great friend of Mortgage Coach. I appreciate the time you've taken to be on this call. I am 
few more final thoughts and we're gonna wrap it up. But you know, hopefully the big takeaway today is keep calm, work hard, and win the day. And we presented some ideas on what are the basics. We presented some ideas on how you could gamify your day-to-day -day job. Uh, I hope that it helps you. I hope you'll take action on that. And here at Mortgage Coach, we're here to help you with these coaching calls. I want to remind everybody to forward uh, the Chrisman report and the compliance video to your leader at your company. And, and again, as responsible mortgage loan officers, MLOs, you all have licenses now. Every loan, you're not only putting your signature on it, you're putting your license on it, you're putting your career on it. So compliance is not management's problem. Like, it, you know, I think so many loan officers have had that perspective in the past. It's yours. It's, and it's, I also say it's your opportunity to shine. Whenever there's chaos, leaders rise. Whenever there's things get more complex, there's an opportunity to take things that are complex and make them simple. We're helping you deliver an amazing borrower conversation in a way that makes you more compliant, in a way that makes it more simple for the borrower. And now is the time for everybody on this call, dig deeper. So I hope you watch this video, I hope you forward it along. And I really hope that you guys will take me serious on this homework assignment and share some of your Edge video links. I can only speak for myself, but I will give you some feedback on those. Um, Mike and Scott, you know, I don't know if you have any time, maybe you look at one or two of them, give some feedback, but if you share that link, I'll tell you what you can do to make it better. And I'll tell you what you're doing that I think is best. So if you don't know how to do anything that we're talking about, come to our Tuesday coaching call at nine o'clock. Make sure you sign up for our 10 days of training. Remember, these are just 20 minute quick hits on very specific strategies. How to do a move up analysis, rent versus own, how to make a video, you know, very simple, very specific ways for you to be successful. We wanna make sure going into 2014, no one has an excuse not to keep calm and win the day. So huge thank you to you, Mike. Scott, any final kind of bullet points before we go into wrap-up mode here? Yeah, a couple quick things, Dave. Just awesome call, Mike. I just thank you for the content. And uh, the, the, here's my quick thoughts. Practice, practice, practice more than you play. And it ties into the, the ballpark thing that Mike did. You know, there was a lot of people that had trepidation and easiness about realtor calling, realtor meetings, what to say. you got to practice, practice, practice. Secondly, when we think about these realtor meetings, your, sky, your success will just skyrocket and take off. If you stop selling, the number one goal when I'm prospecting and calling realtors and booking appointments is to get the appointment. you got to give them honor. You know, what is the connection? How do you know them? How are they referred to you? But if you'll start focusing on that, uh, I generate for every... 10 realtors I call, if I don't know them, I'll generate three referrals. If I know them, or three face-to-face -face appointments, if I know them, it's probably five out of 10. Uh, last thing I think to think about is on, I think, believe it's January 21st, Dave, uh, I'm gonna be the featured guest speaker, and I'm gonna do a whole hour on mastering the art of prospecting. And, and this idea of what are we doing to generate huge results, because with this changing market, the focus on realtor business, We've got to have this game down, as we saw from some of these surveys today. How can we go out? How can we crush it? You know, I measure my results. I have myself and have four. There's a team of five of us. I've got to produce big results. So my commitment in January, 120 face-to-face -face appointments. That's going to take a lot of effort and a lot of focus. I'm going to share how we do that each and every month with you guys so you can go out and do it yourself. Right on. So, Mike, you're the special guest. You get the final words and thoughts. Any comments? I, you know, like I said, I appreciate call? I, I appreciate the opportunity. Um, I, I cherish the, the, the group. There's a lot of great information. I appreciate Scott being on the call and sharing his insight only to help me connect the dots for, for you more clearly. And, and like I said, anybody that needs help, it's, you know, go to the website, improvemytomorrowcoaching.com, um, it, it, Mike at mitcoaching.com, and just tell me, you know, I, I put together a deal for the mortgage coach people this year. Dave knows between now and the 31st, I'll be I'll be discounting the prices on all the coaching programs, um, you know, for mortgage coach people to help them. It, it, go to the website, look around. If you need help, uh, send me an email, and we'll we'll be happy to to have a consultation with you, absolutely free of charge, just to see if we can't help make your 2014 everything you'd like it to be. All right, guys. So again, okay, no no excuses to be closing less than five loans a month in 2014 regardless of interest rates, regardless of marketplace, you've, we've given you a path. How to gamify, what the basics are, some great strategies, some awesome wisdom. 
Hope you listen to this call a couple times over. I think it's been exceptional. I'm only speaking for myself, but I'm a big fan of today's call. Scott, thank you. Mike, thank you. Good luck, everybody. Thank Hope you. to see some edge links and see you next week. By the way, next week's call is going to be with a great Churchill leader. So, you know, Dave Ramsey seems to come up once a month from someone. You know, the mortgage company that Dave Ramsey's business, we've got one of their leaders coming onto the call. It's going to be awesome. Don't miss it. See you next week.